A lot of people tell me that I'm super fast when I work in Illustrator. I think that the key to that is really using a lot of keyboard shortcuts. Today, I wanna to show you some of my favorites and the ones that I use that really help speed up my workflow. Most people know cut and paste shortcuts, but there are a lot more functional shortcuts that you can use in Illustrator. So first I'm gonna go over some single letter shortcuts that allow me to select different tools. I use the letter V to select my selection tool, the letter A to select my direct selection tool, the letter P to select my pen tool, H selects the hand tool, but I actually use the space bar for a quick jump to the hand tool. So it only works while you're holding the space bar and it allows you to move your window around. And when you let go, it returns to the previous tool that you had selected. I to select my eyedropper, L to select my ellipsis tool, M to select my rectangle tool, N to select the pencil tool, and S to select my scale tool. I'll create another video to go over exactly what some of these tools do if you're not familiar with them but these are the ones that I use the most to save the most time. So now I'll get into some of the command shortcuts that I use constantly. So I use command plus and command minus to zoom in and out. It doesn't give you a lot of control on where it's zooming, but it is good for a quick zoom in and a quick zoom back out. Now, another quick zoom with your command key is command zero. And what that will do is it'll zoom you out into a perfectly framed artboard. If you have multiple artboards on your file, it'll use the one that's selected and zoom into that one. So you can also use command one and it'll zoom in to the document at 100%. If this artboard was really huge and I did command zero, it would back me way out of it. But if I press command one, it'll zoom into 100% precisely. Some other command plus number shortcuts that I like to use are command two and three. So command two will lock a selected object. So if I select this blue background and press command two, you'll see that it's been locked. And now I can swoop in over here and select this without disrupting this background. Now, all you have to do is press command option two and it'll unlock the item and you can edit it again. Alternatively, if you don't want to lock it, but you need to hide it, you can press command three with anything selected and it'll actually hide the shape. You can select your entire artwork here and press command three and it'll all go away. And then again, command option three and it'll bring it right back. Command four is a little bit different. What this does is it works with the pathfinder and command four will repeat the last pathfinder function that you used. So if you had two shapes here and you used the minus front to delete that, and then you drew two more shapes and you wanted to do that again, you just press command four and it'll commit the same pathfinder mode to whatever new shapes you have selected. Command five is a really interesting one because this one will turn an existing shape into a guide. So you can do this with either strokes and straight lines or actual shapes. So if you wanted to create maybe like bleed area or something where you just wanted to make sure that you had a specified guide around it, you can draw your shape and press command five and it'll turn it into an actual guide. And if your guides are locked, these new guides that you made will remain locked. Command semicolon will hide all of your guides and bring them back just by pressing it. So this is a very useful one. What you can do is draw a shape over any other shape or artwork, select everything, and make sure that the one that you want to be the mask is on top. You press command seven, and it'll automatically mask the artwork to the shape that's on top. You can also grab a shape that's already been masked, and press command option seven and it'll unmask it. Now, like I said, everybody knows to press command C and command V for copy and paste, but one of my favorite functions in Illustrator is actually using command F and command B. Now, what this will do is paste in front or paste in back. So what I mean by paste in front is if you pressed command X to cut some artwork and then you scrolled over to the other side of the artboard, it's just going to paste somewhere off to the side, basically in the center of your screen, wherever you are currently in the document. If you were to press command X, move over to the side somewhere and press command F, what it's going to do is paste at the very front of the document where it was originally so that it's pasted in place. 
So it's very useful if you have a lot of layered artwork and you really just need something to get up to the top. The alternative way to do this is to select the art, right click, go to arrange, and then bring to front. But you don't necessarily have to do this. You can just cut it, command F, paste it. And if I wanted it to go behind this blue box, I press command B and you can see that my artwork is there, but it's actually moved behind everything else. So with paste in place, you can cut your image, zoom out, scroll way over, press command shift V. And what that's going to do is paste it in its original place. Now, this is actually really helpful if you have multiple artboards, especially if they're the same size. Let's see, I'm going to make a new artboard over here and I'm going to take this art and press command C, select this artboard by clicking in the space inside of it. You press command shift F and it's going to paste it in the exact same spot that it is on this artboard. And so I use shift O to access my artboards and I can use this to edit the size and shape of this artboard as well as add more artboards to my file. Another shortcut that I use all the time is command A to select everything. This is very similar to Photoshop, but the difference is a lot of people try to use command D to deselect, but to deselect everything in Illustrator, you actually have to use command shift A and everything goes away. Command D in Illustrator is actually a really, really helpful shortcut that not a lot of people use. This is one thing that really speeds up a lot of my work. So let's say I had a shape and I wanted to duplicate it several times. And so I use another shortcut, which I'll get to, to copy it. But let's say I need this 10 more times. All I have to do is keep my artwork selected and press Command D and it'll duplicate the last action that I committed. So now I can just keep hitting Command D and you'll see that it will just keep duplicating the shape. This actually works for a lot of functions, including uh, the rotate tool. So if I wanted to spin this and duplicate it several times, I can just hit Command D and it'll keep doing that. If I scale this up and I want to do it again, I can press Command D and it'll duplicate that and just keep increasing the size by the same amount as I did originally. Now, if you're wondering how I duplicated this shape very quickly, this is another great tool. If you have a shape selected and you press and hold Option, you'll see that your cursor will change to these two arrows. And what this means is that anything that you click on and drag while holding option, it's going to duplicate. So now you can just click and drag any item and move it around wherever you want, and it'll create a new copy and place it in your new desired position. Now this also works on artboards. So when I go into my shift O, I can hold option and actually drag this artboard over and it'll just create a duplicate of the entire artboard. Another quick one key shortcut is the backslash, the one with the question mark. And what this will do is select no fill on any shape. So if I select this background here and I click the backslash, you'll see it'll turn it to zero fill or zero stroke, depending on which one you have selected as your front option. Another quick key for your color selection here, anytime you press the letter D by itself, it'll automatically go to the default color settings, which is a white fill with a one point black stroke. So you can do this to reset your colors that you have selected, or you can do this while selecting a piece of art and it'll change that piece of art to have that white fill and that one point black stroke. Now, if you want to quickly switch between your fill being in the front and your stroke being in the front, all you have to do is press the letter X and it'll swap those back and forth. So this is super helpful if you're using the shortcut for the eyedropper and you want to eyedrop the color of this, but your stroke is selected, you can press X to select your fill, press I to select your eyedropper, and click on another piece of art to make it match that color. All right, I hope this video was helpful. A lot of people don't use their shortcuts. It will really help you speed up. Now, my trick for learning a shortcut, especially if you need to learn a lot of them, is to just pick one that you find really helpful for a certain project that you're working on and force yourself to use it, especially if you find yourself going to the menu or right-clicking and doing it the long way. Just take the time to undo what you did, back up, and do it from the shortcut. And I think if you practice a shortcut for just 
just about a week, your brain will start to remember it a lot easier. And then the next time you're working on a project, you'll find that you just start using these shortcuts by second nature. And once you've got one down, then you can move on to the next one. It's super helpful. It's the thing that's going to make you the fastest that you can be. It's going to get you through projects way quicker. And I highly recommend not being afraid to go in and create your own shortcuts. I've programmed probably about 14 or 15 custom shortcuts that I use all the time. Don't be afraid to change some of the default ones if you don't use them. It lets you create a whole new set without disrupting the default ones. So you can always go back and reset those if you need to. But this way, you can really program them to whatever you think they should be. Like if you absolutely want the magic wand to be the letter W, you can go in there and change that. So that way you can remember exactly what keystroke you need to click to get to your tools faster and make you the quickest design possible. All right. Thank you guys for checking this video out. Feel free to comment below and let me know what other videos, what other shortcuts and tutorials and things you want to see from me. If you like this content, please go subscribe to my Patreon page. For as little as $5, you can start getting access to all of my fonts, all of my tutorial videos. And for $10, you can get access to my vector assets. I upload and update these things constantly. I'm really ready to make a lot more tutorial videos. So on there, you'll really be able to get access to request what the newest content that I make will be, whether it's Procreate brushes, tutorial videos, quick tips, or whatever it is you're looking for. I really appreciate you guys' support. Thank you for checking out this video and I'll see you on the next one.